Hey guys, somebody asked, when are you going to do some more reggae beats and uh, or, uh, do something like the drop leaf rhythm? Rhythm, sorry. Right, drop leaf rhythm. Um, okay, now I've got a bit of a problem with the mouse. Ever so often, this mouse, if you slightly even drop it on the desktop, watch this, you lose connection. Completely gone. So I have to be really careful with the mouse. Every time I drop it slightly... Oh, well, half the time it disappears. So the mouse may disconnect during this. Now look, this is... In essence, this drop leaf is a very, very simple beat. It's a one drop, basically, right? But if you analyse the basic instrumental, um, it's a real bit of an odd one. There's some strange things going on in it. Um, so in the simplest sense, listen, it's just a, a straight... One drop. Now, there is a school of thought out there, mostly driven by rock drummers, that says, no, oh, reggae has to drop on the third beat. I don't do it like that. I, I make my patterns with the drop on the two and the four. And that way it's a lot, lot, lot easier to work. And if you play a lot of reggae, um, you'll see that the upbeat and downbeat, this works with that fine. Okay, now look, in essence, if you just look at one of these patterns, it's a simple one drop. Okay, but the you've got a basic set, you've got eight hats here, right? And it's a thin hat. So I'm using the drum machine designer for this. Okay, and I'm using... Um, using this beat machine hi-hat because it's an electronic hi-hat of some type being used right um i'm using the silver lake kick the kick i mean it could be any kick really as long as it's thumping and fairly rounded i'm using the beat machine uh, the detroit garage side stick because you can load acoustic drums from the drum kit designer into drum machine designer so i'm using the detroit garage uh side stick okay so what you've got is, is you've got an eighth hat, tick, 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 a little double at the end, tick, 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 right like that. Let's put a cycle range just around that. Okay, so the hi hat is just tick, 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 like that. Drop on the two, drop on the floor, the side stick and the snare drum, the side stick and the kick dropping on the. Tick drop, tick tick drop, tick 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 drop, tick tick drop, tick tick like that. But there's a little double shaker in here, doing a ch, -ch. and it's very hard to hear. But there's actually a finger click, although it's been filtered um, much finer than I've got these finger snaps. But there's a little finger snap in there, right? So I'm using the little finger snap, okay? But in the original beat, if you listen to it, the instrumental beat. Um, there is a finger snap, so obviously it's done on some sort of drum machine um, or an MPC or something. There's a little finger snap, but it's been filtered so fine that it's like that. But there is a finger snap in there, and that is on in the first beat on the first, second, third, sixteenth, and in the third beat on the first, second, third, sixteenth. Okay, one, two. One, two, like that. And then you've got this double shaker here going. Ch -ch. Right, so one, two, three. Ch -ch. So this is, these two ch -ch is on the second and fourth sixteenth in the second beat. Right, there's the second beat there. Okay, first beat to the bar, second beat to the bar, third beat to the bar, fourth beat to the bar. So there's a little double shaker. Let's take the, let's take the kicks out. Mute the kicks and mute the finger snaps and just listen to the hats and the shakers. I'll turn this up really loud so we can hear it. I've got a tiny smidge of echo as well. I 
and as I put a little softer shaker on that last sixteenth hi hat, so that because in the original beat there's some this is an, a different hat, okay, and then here there's a little extra hat there, okay, and that's um, it's a it's a this is a thinner hat, and this is a thicker hat. Okay, and bring the kicks back in and the side sticks. Whoops. Bring the finger snaps back in. But there's something else going on in this beat as well. There's a reverse pedal symbol going on. This. So what I did is I got a pedal symbol. And if you look, go into the... Um, some of the drum kits there is a pedal symbol now it's not in these um, analog kits you know the sorry these electronic kits the drum machine design I used the drum kit for that right this this probably this one here come on right and then what I did was let's put a cycle range around here I got Actually, no. Retro Rock, is it this kit here? Wait a minute. Have a listen. Okay, do a little double pedal hat there, right? If we go in and look, with the drum kit designer kits, right, there are these, um, you've got a, a regular hi-hat closed, you've got a foot close, which is different. It's not as clicky, it's ch ch like that. That's where the person's stamping on the foot pedal. Right? So I've used that and I made a simple pattern. Da 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 da. And then I um bounced it down to a file, right? And then reversed it. So that we get this. You see the way I've the way I've got the hats arranged here. In in the reverse version, it's the first beat of the bar, the first pedal hat comes on, and then there's a on the second eighth. So first beat of the bar, second eighth. Then this is the third beat of the bar, and the eighth in the middle of that of that final. Um, so first beat of the bar, second beat of the bar, third beat of the bar. So what I did was I just set it up um, like that bounced off a copy so this is the hi-hat here when it's reversed it works this way round you see so here's the original okay look where the, look where the pedal hats are the last two sixteenths and then the sorry the the, the, the second and the second First, second, third, and fourth. So the second and fourth sixteenth in the last beat, in the last beat, and the second and fourth sixteenth in the second beat. Right? So second beat, fourth beat, right? Then when that's bounced down, let's just do I'll do it now, right? Um bounce in place. Just blah 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 blah. And you end up with that. Okay, so the heights are in those positions. Right, second and last sixteenth, second and last sixteenth, and the second and fourth beat. If we then go into the um, audio thing, audio editor file, and just do function reverse, because it's turning it back to front, that then puts the heights the other way round. The first and on the first beat of the bar, and the third beat of the bar, as you see them here and here. And then I just trimmed it back, and shoved it forward to you know to get them. So the first beat's right on the money. And what you end up with is this reversed pedal hat pattern. And then that's really low in the mix. There it is, with the beat. So let's bring the beat back in. And there it is. Now you might think, is it really doing that? Well, have a listen to the have a listen to the original instrumental. It's really hard to hear it, but.
Let's take this bar here with, without the timpani drum at the beginning. Now, if, you might not hear it, but if you take this original and go into the EQ and take out the bottom end, so you're just listening to the top end, See if we can find a section without guitar. Okay, no guitar there. So let's bring the EQ back. Can you hear that? It's really hard to hear, but there is a pedal. It's there, it is in there. Chat, 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 chat. Okay, so that is blended in with the beat there. Okay, so I've got a little reverse pedal. <laughs> So bringing that reverse pedal, it has to be very low down in the mix, really low. It's really subtle. And that's your basic beat. Then the bass line. Pretty simple, right? Boom. Opening beat. Boom, 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 boom. And it's playing a little bit late behind the beat. So this note is a little bit later. It's not exactly on the third beat. And as it gets further towards that note, the notes are backing off. This is slightly behind that line. This is slightly behind that line. And then what I used for that was the thumb bass. And then to give it less attack, I just increased the attack time on envelope two here. So it doesn't quite bite so much when the instant the note is hit it's softer like that and then for the amp i used the ampeg with some now look treble and mid cut right out bass turned up 40 and 100 hertz on the graphic the 250 right down the 625 i mean you can mess with this it, it's not you know the idea of making these beats is not to try and exactly copy if you make a drop leaf rhythm, you can make it in any style you want as long as it follows, because what makes the drop leaf rhythm the drop leaf rhythm is the combination of the one drop beat with that shaker in the middle and the bass line and the guitar. That's what makes it. It's the bass line and the guitar, right? Otherwise, it's essentially a simple one drop with this little double shaker in it. That's really the only thing that, it's a simple one drop. The only difference between a regular one drop is, is this double shaker in it, but any one drop could have instrumental on it, right? Instrum um, other percussion stuff on, right? Okay, so the bass line is pretty easy to work out. I, I don't think I need to go through it. You know, it's just, let's look at the whole bass, right? Here's the bass, all of it. It does, it comes up for this do 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 climb there. Just bring the velocity of these up a smidge. Okay, so you can, if I just move the player out of the way there, you can freeze the video there 
and you can analyze that baseline where I've got the notes and then there right so freeze the video now pause it and check where those notes are and you can make the baseline yourself from that I'm not going to show myself making the baseline okay it's pretty simple now the hard thing about this is the guitar you are not in no way can you use any instrument to make this guitar maybe if you had a specialist set of reggae guitar samples you could make it but the way that the guitarist is playing the guitar is, is he's not pressing down on the fretboard at all right you're making the chord shapes but you're chuck, 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 playing the guitar chuck, chuck, without actually pushing down and fretting the strings which gives you that really scratchy guitar sound Now you can just make out the notes that the guitar's playing. And for this, if I remember rightly, um, if you look up the chords online, they always show it in D. But um, actually, if you go with the original instrumental, the chords are, that's an E, minor seven, then down to C, major, then it goes to, um, so, um, D and then to that which is uh, B7 or something then up to then up to the C A minor 7 and then to the uh, B major Uh, but the way I'm playing it is I'm not fretting the strings so I'm kind of going oh. and that gives you that scratchy it's, it's a reggae chap technique right where you don't actually fret the strings so you you hear the you hear the fingers fretting the strings as if it was played on a fretless instrument right it, you get the you get a subtle impression of the of the notes that are being played in the chord but you're not actually fretting the strings pushing down it's a very hard technique to play ideally you want to play it on a guitar with a higher action Okay, but um, it, it takes some time to develop that technique where you are fretting the chords, but you are not pressing down. You do not press the fingers down. You just rest the fingers on the strings, and then you get the sort of impression of the, of the chap chords like this. Okay, then to get the timing super tight, I flexed it. Oh, there's the mouse gone. Come on, come back. I mean, um, but do you get do you get how it's done? It's it's this chat. Now, what I did was then to get the timing really spot on, I applied flex, and then with the flex, this is I've chopped this up into the individual chaps, right? But this was one long bit of audio of me playing the guitar, right? And then I put the flex on. Um, I didn't put it on. It doesn't matter really what it's on, slicing or what. But what I did was I went to the region box here and quantized it 16. So those chicka chicka were exactly on 16, exactly. And then I trimmed it because when I'm playing the chaps, sometimes I'll, I'll a little, little trailing chicka and there'll be a little artifact there. Yeah, a little chuk, a little hook there. So I just trim that back so that any of those little extras where I act, not there. There's a little thing where I hit the strings there, playing the rhythm. Again, little thing there where I hit the string, playing the rhythm after the chuk, I did a chuk, da, chuk, da, there. So that I just trim those back so they were not audible. And there's my guitar, right? Now to get the guitar sound, 
and I was using a Duncan, just a straight double humbucker guitar with Duncan pickups on on the br- on the bridge pickup with the treble turned up, and then I used the um, the Chicken Picking preset from the library because I knew that would be fairly trebly, right? Clean guitar, Chicken Picking, right? And then with the amp, uh, I turned the treble up full, turned the bass down a little bit. EQ's about halfway uh, for the mid. Uh, presence fairly straightforward. I left everything else as it is, and then. But the, th- the key thing to get that sound that I've done here is with the pedal board. I've got two wires. I've got the vintage wire, right, which is pedaled all the way up, almost, almost all the way up. Followed by the. These are all off these pedals, apart from that compressor, which I turned the sustain down a little bit, right. This is part of the chicken licking preset, these three pedals. So that's off, that is off, this is on, so give me some compression, but it's turned down, the sustain's turned down to there. So there's the vintage wah, turned, pedaled almost all the way up to make the sound thinner and honkier, followed by the modern wah, which is set to the modern wah position, because you've got different ones, modern wah, they can see where the cue is there at about nine o'clock, right? Um, and then this wire pedal, you can see how far up it is in terms of its position, right? It's up there. Two lights lit and the third lamp almost lit or starting to be lit. And that gives me that real thin, filtered sound on the guitar. Okay, and then I've got some uh, EQ um, 0.2 second ambience. Oh, is there an echo on there? Have I put the re- oh, yeah, I've got the reverb on the amp as well, turned up to three. Okay, that's just giving me my chicken picking guitar. Okay, now lastly, the, reg- the reggae organ, I've had to split it into two parts. I made the pattern originally using both bass and chord parts. So you've got the simple chord, 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 with the do do. So chord, do do, chord, do do, chord, do do, chord, do do, like that. Let's bring them into the mix. Right. But then what I did was, because I couldn't, if I turned it up louder, the chord parts, the held note, the boo, was the same loudness as the do do, right? So I split it across two patterns. So this pattern just has the, the chord, the, the basic chord. Right? And if we look at all of those, this is... This is what I, this is probably not right, but I was listening to it. I didn't find a chord progression anywhere online. This is how I heard it. And for this, I'm using a suitcase electric piano. All right, I'm using electric pianos. All right, this is in the old legacy stuff. Logic, keyboards, electric pianos, bright suitcase, because it's not a Hammond sound that, that that's being used. Or if it is, it's messed with in a way that sounds not very Hammond-like. Then I used a Hammond for the bottom end, for these notes, doing the do do the bubble. Sounds probably wrong there. Um, and I'm using the vintage B3 for this. Vintage B3 organ, bebop organ. Not sure that's really relevant which one. I mean, it's hard to get the sound exactly. Don't think that's right. I don't think they're the right notes there. Because the thing about these B3s is some of them don't go down that deep down in the octaves. So 
actually that one. Oh. oh, put this to division. Yeah, I'm not sure that works. B. Let's try an octave like that. Okay, and then when you put them together, I can adjust. I can adjust the level of the do do so that the bubbles are louder. I'm going to put the chords through a bit of reverb now. Okay, now this is no way you're going to get this exactly the same as the original, right? But the original. Here's the original. Uh, without that. Let's take that um, echo off. I mean the uh, the low cut. Right. Also, there's some echo on the guitar, but the timing of it is out with the music. Actually, it's like chuka chuka. Uh, yeah, but I don't. So chaka chaka. There's an echo coming off that guitar, but I didn't put that in. And finally, I put a timpani in there, timpani bam. So this is what I've got, my version of it. Okay, but there's the beat. Your simple one drop, right? Just, just again, just to recap: eighth hats with a double at the end, a double sixteenth at the end. So eighth, 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 eighth. eighth. This is the closed hat, and then this one. So it goes tick, 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 tick. Tick, tick at the end then the drop on there and the drop on there side stick and kick together there's a double shaker there on the fourth and second sixteenth and second beat there's the finger snaps here and here and that this last height is a little bit louder than all the hats being used across the pattern so I just put a shaker above it that weird double pedal like that now let's bring the original in with it and fade it up The guitar's a bit more rounded, right? So yeah, I'll go back to my guitar and put some mid on it here. Try and warm it up a bit down the bottom. 
Yeah, it's, it's a bit of an odd one. It is a little bit of an odd one, I'll tell you. But does that help? A bit more louder hats, I think. I'll put a bit of compression on the kick and the, and the rim shot. A side stick. That's it, really. Come on, close. Right, so um, yeah, it's not um, as I say. If you when you do a rhythm in reggae, right? Somebody does the original, and they're going to be using very very specific sounds. The mixer will be set, or however they're mixing it on software on or a hardware mixer, with certain filters and certain effects and things. Very 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 difficult to ever totally reproduce an original rhythm exactly the same, right? So when people do a rhythm they'll say well this is the drop leaf rhythm and they'll do their version of it so in essence to do a drop leaf rhythm you just need a one drop that's all it is it's a one drop with eight hats and a double at the end on the hat a 16th double at the end the shaker the one drop and, and that's it and the rest of what makes it the the, the um, drop leaf is the guitar chords the organ the chord progression and the bass line progression right Which is very old school. That chord progression goes back a long time. Right back to the old days. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, that's it. It's, it's a one drop in essence. But it, what makes it a drop leaf is... That... You know... Hmm... The bass line and the, and the chord progression. Just gonna just gonna compress that timpani hit. Try and get it louder. Yeah, that's better. And I think if you listen to the original. They've used some sort of orchestral stab because I think there's a cello and a bottom end strings coming off with that um, timpani hit. I think, I, think some, I think there's some strings there, deep symphony strings going, and they just fade out in the first quarter beat. I know the bass is underneath it, but you can hear there is something besides that timpani drum. So I, what I did for mine is I got, and by the way, the timpani drum... It's just from the orchestral, yeah? Orchestral, percussion, timpani. But I've used two timpani drums layered. The bottom one's a bit deeper. An octave down. A little bit lower in, in velocity, so it's not quite as loud. And there's, there's my timpani hit. Bit of reverb on it, maybe too much. But the key is the guitar. If you can't play guitar, unless you've got some sort of specialist reggae samples, and then you'd have to have the guitar player doing the sample set, playing that chord, chord progression, you'll never get that guitar sound. You cannot get it by using a, a sampled instrument normally. Because that chuck, chuck way of playing is very, very specific. So what I might do is I might put this into a zip. <coughs> Pardon me. And then people can get the guitar and put it to make their own beat and put the guitar with it, right?
bringing the drums up louder. They're a bit weak. Now they're up louder. And I'm going to bass the drums up. This is the stereo final channel of the drums, so I'm going to put some bottom end on them to, to boost the whole bottom end of the whole drum kit. Warm it all up. And this is my final channel again, a little bit of warmth down the bottom there just to warm the whole thing up. Okay, obviously there's a lot more to this thing. Across the whole song, you've got the um, the acoustic guitar playing that riff. Um, you've got the percussion, the hand percussion, which is varying all the way through. Yeah, so there's lots more to it, but that's the basic drop leaf rhythm. <laughs> I just slung in a couple of hand, a couple of basic djembe hand drums in here from the African kit, but it's not really. It's adding a little something, but this is not what's happening in the track. The little lick at the end is what's happening in the track on that particular fill at the end. Just get a hand percussionist to play over that. Although, I mean, if, <laughs> to try to reproduce what's happening on the original instrumental using samples would be nigh on bloody impossible. So, you need to get a hand drummer in if you're going to have hand drumming on it on your version and, and get someone to play over it, you know, someone who's experienced. <laughs> So I'll tell you what I'll do, just to, um, what I'll do with this then is that section in the middle there, um, I can render this off or, or save this as a Logic song but without the original audio in and then um, you can open it in Logic and do it yourself if you want but you'll get the guitar chaps, then I might render off that guitar chaps as a separate single file a piece of audio four bars long right um, but anyway there you go drop leaf rhythm as requested